committee and uh, we are going to get an update from uh, the Commissioner of Forests and Parks, Michael Schneider, and the Deputy Commissioner, Sam Lincoln, on how the uh, forestry uh, project is going with the help from COVID-19 and um, move, uh, move forward with that so that we are knowledgeable and if any questions come up, um, we could uh, help uh, answer them. Um, so good morning, uh, Commissioner and Deputy Commissioner, and glad to have you with us. And I would expect, uh, Michael, are you going to lead off? Sure. Thanks, Senator Starr. And good morning, everyone. Happy to be with you. Thanks for the invite. We're uh, um, pleased to be able to give a an overview of what we've done with the $5 million that was uh, authorized for us to make uh, grants to businesses in the forest economy, known as the Forest Economy Stabilization Grants. My part here will be brief uh, to really just introduce and, and uh, tee it up for Sam with my thanks and ask folks to appreciate. This was a monumental effort um, and Sam led a team of our folks and some partners um, in standing up this program, working through VITA, uh, and getting more than three and a half million dollars out the door to these businesses um, along the way. So we're prepared to give you a quick rundown. We can follow it up with a written report if you need. But um, with that, I, I and my uh, great appreciation, I'll hand it over to Sam to just hit the high points. And then I'd suggest the high points, Sam, and then we, we're prepared to give you details and background or answer questions as, as you may have them. So thanks all again and uh, take it away, Sam. All right. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. Good morning, uh, Sam. Uh, for the record, Sam Lincoln, Deputy Commissioner, Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. Um, Act 138 created the Forest Economy Stabilization Grant Program with $5 million to go out to eligible forest products businesses uh, suffering um, economic harm as a result of the pandemic. And um, we, the, the eligible businesses were uh, forest managers, harvesting, trucking, processing, manufacturing, crafting, or distribution businesses all up and down the supply chain, everything from the stump through uh, furniture makers, crafters, and, and truckers, uh, all, all aspects of it. Um, we worked, we partnered with Vita. They did their reviews on the applications. We, we opened up the applications on August 5th um, and intended to close on September 4th. We had the deadline of September 15th where the funding expires um, and reverts to the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Um, we got close to that date and we hadn't used all the funds up and we extended the application for four more days up until this Tuesday afternoon. Uh, at that time, we have uh, approved 70 grants uh, totaling um, just over $3.6 million out of the $5 million appropriation. Um, we did a revenue loss uh, reimbursement for businesses that, you know, some of the other grant programs have done a percentage of past year's revenue or things. We required business owners to upload profit and loss statements for all of 2019 and year to date 2020, did a comparison of the revenue. Um, and if they demonstrated $5,000 or more in revenue loss for the months of the pandemic, we did a dollar for dollar uh, revenue replacement up to $100,000. Um, we did 70 grants uh, that averaged uh, $52,245 a piece. Um, we had 32 managing or harvesting businesses, 24 manufacturers, distributors, and crafters, eight forest trucking businesses, and six processors, which includes sawmills and uh, fuel wood producers, et cetera. Um, these businesses are all pretty significant throughout the forest economy or wide range in size. Every you know, average six employees and the average uh, revenue per business uh, across the applications was just over uh, $1.1 million a year. So these are all uh, pretty important rural businesses out there in our economy. And uh, so I'll stop there if you have um, uh, questions or, or if there's more I can provide. One other quick note of, uh, I think, just to make, uh, right, Sam, uh, all 13 counties uh, yes. we funded in, and didn't, I don't think we had any from Grand Isle. So we made grants to businesses in every county of the state except Grand Isle, for which there were no applicants. Yeah, uh, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And welcome, Sam and Michael. It's great to see you. 
Uh, I want to uh, express my appreciation to Senator Polina, who sent me a uh, email from one of my constituents, as it turns out. So I just want to read this and see where we are with it. Um, his name is Bob Gasparetti. He's a furniture maker in Mount Tabor, and he's having trouble accessing the forestry grant. He would like to know whether the Ag Committee would push back the deadline. And um, so when Sam mentioned your deadline right now is next Tuesday, is that correct, Sam? Next Wednesday, the 15th. Next Wednesday. Um, if I sent you this gentleman's name and um, email address, would you be able to uh, assist him in getting the application in before that date? Well, so I, sp nope. I spoke with him yesterday, Senator, actually. Oh. I okay. called Bob yesterday. Yeah, that's how we roll at FPR, yes. And, uh, um, and we were just in Senate Economic Development explaining the same thing to Senator Hooker, who had called me about this as well. Oh. But uh, Bob, Bob we, I, I've known Bob uh, through the Wood Manufacturers Association. Uh, he had talked with Sam and others. Um, uh, basically, what it comes down to, he, he, had, uh, he had applied for an ACCD grant. I think he got one. He was trying to stack for additional loss, uh, the Forest Economy Stabilization Grant. And at the last minute, uh, for whatever reason, he did not upload his application. It's not in the system. Our deadline, the statutory deadline of the 15th is for the money to be spent. And given the process and the timeline, we, we, we didn't wanna be in a position of um, awarding someone a grant and then not being able to pay it because of it closed. So we needed to time it right. And Sam was very careful with this to try to, well, let's extend it to get as many as we can, but not push it too far. So that was the eighth was, was deemed the close. So Bob's application actually never got loaded in by the deadline. And that's kind of the problem here. We've talked to him about his alternatives, his options to go back to ACCD to the Working Lands Cares uh, yes. Recovery Grant. Uh, we've, we were gonna help him there. And I indicated to him that we had talked about coming in before you all and saying, hey, can we change this deadline? It appeared that it wasn't, wasn't legislatively possible to get the change made in time. So unfortunately it's closed, he didn't make it in and we're standing by ready to either, um, if, there, if there's extra funds left over, it reverts to ACCD. We just got done speaking with Commissioner Goldstein. We, we would be working with them to try to get Bob money through that alternative funding. So I, I hope that explains just generally that uh, for, certainly we're aware and jumped on the situation as quick as we could. And it's an example that there are additional businesses out there that we've not been able to get help to and we want to. Um, sorry, Sam, I, if you want to fill in there, just I had the conversation with Bob. I wanted to be sure to report on it. Oh, I have well, nothing to add you that. have, you have, or you had one point, you still have at 1.4 million that's not expended. Um, we didn't, we didn't put that in the, where it would revert to the working lands program in our bill, did we? No, it goes to ACCD. Right. And just, just to be clear about the remainder, whatever remains, we still have to take out what we will pay VITA for their role in this, which was statutorily designed. So um, we don't know what that will be, but it will be less than the 1.4. But it, So the remainder will not be the total that you see there or what we reported on, because we have yet to be invoiced, if you will, by VITA. What about having uh, uh, Bob um, go to working lands at the ag agency because forestry, uh, forest products is in there. Uh, That's what we've advised him. We, we, we definitely encouraged him to do that. And Sam just told me, uh, it looks like they're gonna raise that cap too, which will really help in this regard. So. We have that's Senator Starr. That's what we've suggested that Mr. Gasparetti do is 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 go there, and um, I think maybe at first there was a concern that it wouldn't be big enough, but I think now they've lifted the cap. Sam, am I right that that might might actually help his situation? That's my understanding. That so you're saying just ask a follow up. Uh, was Bob happy at the end of the phone call with you? I mean, is he is he satisfied that there's a path forward, or should I call him or? Well. I don't want to speak for Bob, but I mean, I, as I told Senator Hooker on the phone yesterday, I was like, listen, I want to make something clear here. Bob was very, it was clear Bob was frustrated by what seemed to be a technical glitch and why can't I just get this fixed? But he couldn't have been more polite 
more civil, more understanding. So I, I, I was grateful for that. I think he understands that we want him to get this money, um, but we have to treat the things fairly and we have to follow the, the, the rules and the, of the road. And so my sense is that he was reasonably satisfied, but still eager to get some help um, in okay. whatever way we can get it to him. I'll follow up with him. Thank you very much. Yeah. So just to, be, just to be clear and to finish that up, you're suggesting that he go to working lands? Is that what you're saying? Yes, I think there's an opportunity for him to okay. get one of the uh, the working lands COVID uh, recovery grants, not okay. regular working lands money. Um, and that's another way to get help. I would say, though, if there's beyond that, if if our funds can be turned over and gone to ACCD, I know Joan seemed interested in in uh, uh, funding him there through there. Uh, so there's multiple. I see uh, at least two pathways for him to get additional assistance. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Rose. Yeah. Um. So a couple questions. To, um. Uh. Notwithstanding Bob, are there other people who you've been talking to and having similar conversations that may have missed the deadline or had technical issues that you haven't been able to fund because of that? I'll defer to Sam, please. Thank you. Um, a couple things, just to just to be clear, the, the cap for the working lands grant is fifty thousand. I'm not exactly sure if when I said earlier they'd raised it. I'm I'm you know I we're, don't think they have. Okay, I I may be mis uh, mistaken when I uh, said that earlier, but they the fit the cap is fifty thousand, which I think um, you know it's less than ours was, but it's still significant. Um, but there, so back to your original question, Senator Hardy, um, we have had other. Uh, applicants that uh, missed the deadline, that um, heard about the program but uh, didn't hadn't applied in time, or for whatever reason, um, we had other people that had incomplete applications. There were, um, like I said, we required uh, upload of profit loss statements, reconciliation with tax returns, a fairly thorough review of these uh, financials, and we we had to cut a certain a stop a certain date, uh, so we didn't run the clock out and not have funding as it reverts to ACCD. So there are businesses that have reached out that either didn't apply the first time uh, and or didn't complete their corrections needed to make their documents reconcile. Um, and so there are there have been some um, and it's un, like I said, it's unfortunate, but we, we in order to treat everyone the same um, as the days go on and more people ask for that, we, we just felt like we would roll right past the date and no longer have funds as we tried to help people get through. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, Sam, I mean, just to be clear, it sounds like you guys did a great job in a sh really short amount of time and got a lot of money out the door. Um, so that's really impressive. And, you know, it sounds like you worked well with Vita and that's that's great. So the, but my you. question and my, the reason for my question, well, another sub question, and then I'll get back to what I wanted to say. The sub question is, did you, it, it sounds like you covered revenue losses. Did you cover expenses that any of these operations might've had uh, related to COVID? <laughs> we, we did not, um, we did not set the program up to up to, uh, to uh, intake expense additional expenses, COVID related expenses. We hadn't been hearing about that as an issue in the forest economy generally. Okay. Um, and we made it clear that uh, grant funds could be spent on COVID related, you know, to, to uh, be spent on expenses they'd incurred uh, because of the pandemic and things like that. But we generally weren't hearing of, of uh, needs or large expenses being, uh, made by the businesses in the forest economy that were related to this, the way that some other sectors of the economy might have to stand up uh, lots of workplace sanitization or things like that. These are, these were much more related to revenue loss. Okay. Yeah. So I guess my, if we're, if what I'm hearing from you is there may be other business, uh, other business owners in addition to Bob who yeah. um, have not gotten the funding and that the best, most logical place to send them is to working lands. So I'm wondering, um, if we, as a, and this is more of a question for the committee, if we could put language in that the funds would revert to the working lands funds, your unused funds, um, whatever it may be, 1.4 million less what VITA gets instead of going to ACCD, because if these forestry related businesses need help, that's the best place for them. So I'd like to be able to provide the money through that. Um, so I don't know if it's too late, um, but just wanted to throw that out there. If that's a possibility, we could put it in our in our ag bill. Yeah, it should have. We should have had. I mean, we're the ones that put this together. 
we should have had it revert back to the working lands program. Um, and then we could have funneled these guys through through working lands um, to, uh, you know, to be sure to get to as many people as possible. Right. I mean, I, we still could do it. It can be retroactive, I think. Um, and it, it may be just that Forest Parks and Rec sort of holds on to the money and says, hey, we know there's legislation coming. I, I don't know, uh, but I, I think it might be something worth looking into um, because clearly there's still some needs out there that are in this sector. We have been, another, go ahead, Sam. Oh, we have been uh, uh, ever since the beginning and anybody that we deemed ineligible for um, our program one way or another. And there have been some, uh, we found in particular that either some of our larger businesses in the state in the forest economy have uh, exceeded the $20 million cap of annual revenue, we found um, some of our very important businesses are not Vermont domiciled, et cetera. But we have, um, for those businesses that have found a way to, to um, generate more revenue, they're good managers. And for whatever reason, they've not met our eligibility standards. We've said, go to Working Lands, go check that out. Um, for whatever reason, they may, they're, they're all very unique situations. And we've pointed all of them to the Working Lands. Our website now directs people to Working Lands and we're ready to help support that program however we can in, in the sector the sector of the economy the the other issue is uh, you know VHCB has a whole crew of people mm. scattered around Vermont to assist people that are having technical problems or issues um, I just I don't have that number in front of me uh, but Linda could send it to you guys so that you uh, or have you been putting that out anyhow? We we, we have Senator Starr. We had <clears throat> Vita, uh, excuse me, VH and Forest Viability Program jumped right in with us uh, immediately, and they had several consultants contracted uh, available at no cost to forest economy business owners to uh, develop the proper documentation to upload applications if, if they didn't have uh, internet connectivity. Um, our staff were available seven days a week from the day the application opened until it closed to uh, help people get their documents corrected. Um, so uh, we've been all hands on deck there too. And we have been uh, giving, I, I can't quite tell you Mariah's number off. I think it's 828-1098, but I'm not 100% sure of the number at VHCB, but I have uh, presented that to many business owners. Yeah, well, that Sam looks good, doesn't he folks? He looks good for a man who hasn't slept since June. <laughs> well, it, it, people don't realize, you know, the general public don't realize, I don't think, how hard you folks and other folks in state government have been working to get this money out the door. I mean, they uh, drag ass and, and don't get their applications in. And I mean, you guys are chasing them to get it done. And, uh, you know, on dairy, we've had 550 apply out of seven, 700 and something. Yeah. Uh, we still got 200, 200 dairy farmers out there, or farmers that that haven't got their application in yet. And golly, it, it's important that we we kick this money out the door to keep the economy going and help these businesses stay stay alive. Um, other questions, Chris? Hi, thanks guys. And, and uh, you know, you should be proud because um, a lot of other programs, aid programs have struggled and you've basically been able to spend the great bulk of the money and help Vermonters. I'm encouraged by that. I Somebody sent me the list of where the grants went, and I guess I was a little surprised that they were more on the recreational side and seemed a little less in the forestry. I, I had thought more of wood products and stuff like that, and I wonder if you can just talk to us a little bit about the thinking sure. and that logic. Sure, Senator Pearson, and thanks for your, your comments. We really appreciate it. Um, and I think uh, you may have seen the list that I shared with several that was for the another grant program that we were authorized to spend. That was the Outdoor Recreation Grants. Oh, okay. Um, a pool 1.5 million 
uh, to us to give out to outdoor recreation businesses. Those, so those are tours, uh, okay. summer camps. That's, that's totally separate than the five. Separate, even a separate you, separate legislation, separate okay, that, bills. That makes yeah. more sense. Do we have, uh, is it on our website, the, the list of grantees that the-, the No, no, went? Sam just ran through a quick sort of overview, um, but uh, we can prepare that, right, Sam, and send that along. Um, you know, it's there's 70 and they range from consulting foresters, logging contractors, maple sap producers, uh, distributors, crafters, trucking, um, and a few sawmills. So they are, as you would have expected, all very much in the kind of core of the forest economy supply chain. Great. Well, don't prepare that for me, but I'm assuming you have a report like everybody else does on this stuff. So yes. I'll look for it there uh, once once you submit that. But that gets at your question, though. That's, yeah. Did, uh, do you recollect if Taft uh, from Charleston ever got in? Um, I don't know if I'm, I am supposed to <laughs> identify individual applicants or not, uh, but I believe that, that, uh, we, we, uh, were successful in, uh, resolving issues that came up in your county, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, that's where it all got kind of started is uh, that, uh, I'm just hoping that, um, you know, you took care of folks that at least got in. Uh, now, has ACCD, have they offered to help uh, do these folks that didn't have complete applications uh, and didn't help out, um, did they? That damn phone. Um, <laughs> I don't know what happens when I unplug the thing right off the wall <laughs> and, uh, um, but uh, are they trying or is anyone trying to contact the ones that didn't make it in because of incomplete applications or, or do you know if, if, if they are or not helping? So, so I've been sending uh, emails to the incomplete applications, reminding them that they're in the queue and that their their application has not been approved, uh, that it needed corrections, and saying if they missed, I think I sent an email a few hours before the deadline on Tuesday saying if they did not get through the door to go to ACCD and or the Working Lands Fund, um, which has been uh, a regular recommendation of ours. It's on our website now, directing people. Um, so we've we've been clear and we're as we're wrapping up I think we haven't had another conversation with ACCD or working lands in the in the last few days as we wrapped up but we can certainly um, plan to talk about that and if there's a way to direct more more communication to those businesses to do that we're we're happy to do so and one other thing that I uh, to some of the other comments that have been made and I certainly uh, I want to make sure to point out a, a lot of tremendous work by our staff um, help make this all happen, as well as, um, and I mentioned the Firebird Forest Viability Program, but VITA was a, an enormous help uh, to us getting this up and running. They had worked a lot with ACCD and um, VITA staff were also reviewing applications seven days a week, and uh, they helped us get, get this program up and running very quickly. We wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Any other questions for Michael or Sam, uh, Brian? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Not a question, just want to echo uh, Senator Hardy and Senator Pearson and Senator Starr, and I assume Senator Polina's feeling you guys should really feel good about what you've done. Um, it's really rewarding and uh, it feels good when, when state government functions as efficiently as it apparently has in, in your uh, department. So. Thank you both very much. And please pass along our thanks to your staff. We will. And again, we really appreciate it. It's really nice to hear um, these folks really, really uh, cranked. And it was not easy. Uh, and we share the same sentiment. Um, we're proud to get it out the door, do what we're here to do, help people. Uh, and I'll just turn it around and say to you guys, thanks for giving us the chance to do it and uh, authorizing it and supporting this sector as a specific sector of our economy with a lot of values. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thanks. Well, eventually we're going to try to get forestry moved to ag over in the Senate side so we can help you guys even more in the future because it's really uh, important to our rural economy and, uh, and I think you would get more and better attention if it dealt, was dealt with in agriculture and forestry rather than in uh, some other areas of the Senate. Um, Thanks, Senator Starr. Could I make one more comment, please? I just wanted to say, I, I always knew, I've been here a long time now, I always knew you had a plan to get a bigger committee room, but I had no idea you were gonna go global pandemic to pull it off. <laughs> this, is, this is, you know, very comfortable here. Yeah, it isn't bad at all. We're all socially distanced by hundreds of miles. And <laughs> no, uh, no, we're still working on the committee room now. And uh, um, boy, it's like getting teeth out of a chicken, I'll tell you. There's <laughs> this problem and that problem. And this one has to say, okay. And this group has to okay it. I mean, it's way beyond my thinking, the complications that people uh, raise. Uh, but anyways, uh, we really appreciate you guys, uh, all the work and your time this morning uh, and uh, keep up the good work. And hopefully we'll be back in Montpelier. Well, of course we got a little election in between now and and when uh, the legislature reconvenes. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be back so we can work together again. We look forward to it. Thank you all. And Thank hey, you. the other reminder is if you bump into problems between now and when we go home that you think we could help you with, don't be shy about emailing us or or getting a hold of us because uh, you know we when we work together we get good things done and sometimes you shy away and say well you know uh, I've I've been to the table too many times but feel free to to contact us if something arises appreciate that we will and uh, you know that's really nice to hear because we do have you know respect that you're busy and you have a lot of incoming and i don't want to be a pest ever it's nice to hear that you welcome a little incoming if we have something you, you know to be at least to run it by so thank you for that we'll do yeah and thank don't you. forget i'll tell you if you're a pest <laughs> i'm counting on that yes <laughs> i would well, i just i'll throw out there too that um you know the situation the drivers and all this in the force economy are ongoing the, the big major drop in the global demand for paper is ongoing we're talking to paper mills uh that still have wood cut last winter in their yards that they haven't used yet no orders and 16 percent of the low-grade wood or the all the wood harvested in vermont's forest lands at a paper mill and that demand has been curtailed severely so um as long as people are continuing to work remotely um, and a few other factors, there's a real whiplash going on in the forest economy. Um, so it'll be good to good to check in and talk about that again. And we'll, we'll uh, certainly be ready to talk about any ideas as they come up. Well, and, and don't forget that we did get the um, S, I think it was S, yeah, S190 uh, that was in uh, Chris Pearson's finance committee we did get that voted out and sent to the house and it would be nice if we could get uh, S-190 passed through the house. Uh, it's the Rygate, the extension of the Rygate paper mill to, uh, so we could you know, know that we've got long-term uh, chip uh, disposal uh, area right here in, in Vermont. And uh, so if you get a chance to weigh in on that, we'd appreciate it. Will do. Yeah. Any thank other any other questions? Well, thank you guys and we'll see you around. Great. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Take yeah. care, everyone. So um committee, uh, we we need to have a little discussion. 
in regards to uh, the holding tank legislation uh, for Addison County. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we have talked about this almost as much as we've talked about chickens. Um, yeah, it's close. I mean, I don't know which one's in first place, but they're, they're running neck and neck. We haven't uh, even visited the holding tank yet, though, except for me. I did <laughs> go visit, so maybe we all need to go visit. <laughs> the, um, well, um, Ruth, you had correspondence with your county seatmate in regards to um, to the holding tank, and I think he's agreed to take it up this next week. Apparently, apparently, yeah, he wants to get a lot of testimony about it. I, 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 uh, we ha I have a draft that Michael drafted that is a very narrow amendment that would just do, do away with the financial sur surety requirement for holding tanks for spe very specific nonprofit limited term organizations. Um, this would just make it cheaper for them to get their replacement tank. Um, they, they do have to get a bigger tank. So this would make it so they didn't have to uh, pay for the basically the insurance for 20 years or whatever it is. So yeah, it's pretty limited and it would only apply to very specific organizations. And did Peter, has Peter Walk, uh, talked to, or have you talked with him in regards to the legislation and he's in agreement? Well, like, so, so DEC, uh, Commissioner Walk and DEC actually proposed this. They proposed a much broader exemption to the financial surety that would have exempted, it, which would have gotten rid of the financial surety requirements for all holding tanks. And we, um, based on our conversations Senator Starr and um, others, um, we made it much more uh, narrow. So it's only for nonprofit, limited time, uh, you know, uh, organizations like the fair. Um, so, um, so I think DEC wanted a, a broader one, and this is a compromised, narrower one um, that would just allow the exemption for certain organizations. So yeah, I think they're supportive of it. I haven't talked to him recently, so, but we certainly could get him in to see what he says. So what I was thinking is possibly uh, next Tuesday, if we can arrange it, we will have uh, our Michael um, O'Grady and Peter Walk, the uh, commissioner, and us, uh, get together to go over everything and make sure that we're all on the same page and we're all in agreement and then try to get hold of uh, the committee on natural resources to see what day we might be able to have a a joint meeting if if they so desire um, and kick that out of there because um, Chris has said that, well, it's under his jurisdiction and anything in Title 10, regardless of what it is, is, of course, under his jurisdiction, not the Senate's, but his. And uh, so we're going to have to meet with them. And I don't know, Chris, if that's something you could call him about ahead of time and yeah, you and see if. I mean, the guy, he's hard for me to deal with because of his uh, demeanor and his questions. Well, we are recorded, sir. Um, I mean, I'm happy to call him. I also, I guess I wonder if Senator Hardy, as a district mate, uh, why don't why don't Ruth and I talk about what makes sense? And, but you're basically saying any chance we could all get together on Tuesday to just talk through this issue. Is that what you're asking for? Um, yeah, it would be kind of nice to get this done for those folks uh, because we'll be into another 
somebody will be into another legislative session and then it won't get done until yeah, yeah. maybe until spring and uh, it'd be too late for the fair. And, you know, hopefully we'll have this squared away when the pandemic, by the time this pandemic is over with, so that things get back to normal or some kind of normal, uh, they can open that uh, welcome center up uh, and and have people utilize this wonderful building. Yeah, Chris and I can, uh, Pearson and I can talk about um, how to move forward with it if you if you yeah. want. That makes sense. Um, can I ask about another thing? Is is it does it make sense or is there interest at all or possible to move the money from? the forestry thing to the working lands instead of over to ACCD? Or is it too late to make that change? Well, well, they're, they're gonna, they have until Tuesday, right, to move the money. And I doubt if we're gonna have our, our bill done, you know, our uh, COVID uh, changes dates and all this done by then. Yeah. Um, I, I can ask. Yeah, I mean, it's just, if we're sending everybody to working lands, but then we're not putting the extra money in working lands, it's going to detract from potential farm operations and businesses that are going to working lands. I don't know if it's going to end up making a difference. It might only be a couple grants, but just a thought. It's a million bucks at least, so. I would think that ACC, uh, D would support that. I mean, their hands are, I would think, are pretty full. And, um, you know, ag's all set up to help forestry uh, applicants and, uh, you know, woodworking companies. The same, basically, it's the same language that we have in working lands for forestry. So if, I would think that, that we could do that. I mean, it, it's logical and it makes sense. So we could, um, Michael isn't with us, uh, he's in commerce today. Um, so why don't we put that on the schedule for, for Tuesday and uh, maybe Michael on Monday could get something uh, drafted up uh, so that we could do that. Would that work? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Senator Starr, Linda's asking uh, in the chat box, Senator Starr said he wants committee to meet Tuesday before a joint meeting. Are we talking about two separate meetings? Well, um, I, I didn't know if we should go through everything. So we're squared away good before we meet with with natural resources. So if we, if we met, say at nine and we can meet with them at 10 or something, um, that do you think that's necessary? Well, Tuesday, of course, we'll have a floor at 9.30, right? Yeah, so yeah, 10, so. Has well, do you, do you feel comfortable not meeting before we meet with uh, natural resources? Well, the only thing I might suggest, if if Ruth wants to send Chris Bray the language, maybe you already have, and DEC has already, uh, in essence, approved it, and, and then maybe there's, you know, as little Richard said a long time ago, good golly, Miss Molly, haven't we talked about this thing long enough? Can't we get this thing done for these people? Yeah, it's um, Senator Bray has the language, and as does DEC. Um, and uh, you know, and to be clear, this will not fully take care of them. They still have to buy a new tank because the one they they bought was not sufficient. But this will make it cheaper for them to finance the purchase of that tank. Um, so, uh, but this is this is the I you know if we can do this this is well I'll just say you know we're done this is all we can do they still have to 
they still have to have a tank that's sufficient to meet the the flow of the building so um but this it, the, the it's just meant to make it more affordable for this small operation especially now when they had a whole year of no revenue and the the crazy part is that they already have i think three tanks and three uh different facilities their population at the event has not increased. So it's the same number of people. We've added a 7,000 gallon tank on top of the other three, but yet it's not quite enough to handle, you know, the same population that's been going to the fair for the last few years. So, you know, it, it's, it's all very weird and strange and but so I why don't we then just try to meet with Chris we'll meet with Michael and Peter if we can't meet with Chris because I'm sure he'll have his schedule all laid out uh, for the next month uh, and but he's going to try to squeeze us in okay I think okay. it makes sense to have Michael and Peter, and if we can meet jointly and take care of this, that would be helpful. Thank yeah. you, guys. And we'll try to meet after the uh, after the four on Tuesday. Sounds good. So I think uh, we'll jump off. Is there anything else that needs to be brought up? I don't think if, so. No, if not, uh, thanks a lot, and we'll see you on. Uh, Senate floor in 15, 20 minutes.